Today I'm going to talk about uh, optics, which are these structures that we've seen sort of a bit of in various talks over the past year. But let me start by just giving some examples. Uh, so the first example um, is going to be that of a lens. I'll hold this there, don't disagree. So um, a lens, let's say, I won't be too precise, but uh, let's just say we're working at the moment in some symmetric mode or some category with products. Um, you can pretend everything's in set at the moment. So a lens from A to A prime, A prime to EB prime. So these are objects in our category, sets, so say, um, is a pair. Uh, let's call it G from B to A. G mm -hmm. for get. And then. Is that the way you want to go? That is the way. Um, so I'm doing a terrible thing, which is that I'm taking a convention that people have and, despite knowing not very much about this field, reversing the convention. But I think this is better. Uh, OK. So that's what we have. We have two functions. We might insert draw them like this. G from B to A into the standard monodal category string diagram notation. Um, B times A prime to B e prime. Um, OK, so what are some examples of this? Um, sort of just heuristically, one thing you might have to think about is uh, some sort of database synchronization updating procedure. Um, so we might have just make our two objects, sets, whatever, be the same thing. So if we have a phone and we have a cloud um, and we get something from, we might get some information from the cloud onto our phone. Um, and then we might change that information on our phone and want to put it back to the cloud. So given some the previous state of the cloud and uh, the new state of the phone, we could get in, we could put that back to the cloud and get a new state of the cloud. Right. So that's sort of some heuristic idea about where these things arise in terms of sort of database synchronization. Um, a more concrete example is, say, a constant complement lens. Um, so we have products lying around. Um, the constant complement lens is a lens of the form a to a prime, a a prime to c times a, c times a prime, c being the complement um, and it being the same. The constant must refers to the fact that our functions aren't going to change it. So we have a map from c times a to a, and I'm just going to sort of project into the second factor. Um, and for update, I'm going to have uh, some state, some element of c times a prime, I have a new a prime, and I'm going to put that back. Um, and get a, wait, that's not right. I have this and this, and I get mm -hmm. a, I think it's not typing right. I have c times a, a state of the cloud, and a new state, and I, sorry. What's going wrong with I'm not typing. Let me just copy this. C times so B is, there, ah, okay, B is C times A, A prime is A prime, and B prime is C times A prime. And so what do we do here? We just sort of pipe this, these things through and forget this element here. So I'm just going to draw a picture. It looks like that. Um, so there are some examples of lenses. Uh, let me define some more optical structures now. Um, so something we haven't seen before, I think, is a prism. Um, again, we have these two these pairs as our, our objects or domain and codomain of the prism. And a prism is just door to lens. So it's is a pair. Um, let's see. I'm going to call this match from B to plus A, and I'm going to have a thing called build of B from A prime to, to B prime. Um, so it's, 
It's exactly the same as that, except we can both take the opposite direction of the arrow and turn the plus into a times. And you switch the two sides? Right. Is no. the build like the get? The build is like the get. The arrow is unprimed. Um, You're switching the top and bottom also? I guess I'm switching the top and bottom also. It seems like the natural way to do things. <laughs> um, you know, it should become clearer in the moment. So examples of this um, include something like, here's one where I'll just make the types the same again. We have integers and we have some, in our programming language, we have a type for integers and a type for reals, like float or something. Um, and then something like match will take a real and check whether it's an integer. And if it's an integer, it's going to extract out. So this is a map from let's do real to int. So it's a map to real plus int. So if it's an integer, it's going to put it as an integer type. If not, it's just going to let it remain as a real. Um, and then we have build, uh, which goes from int to real. And this sort of just casts what did I get this name? I just got this it's think of it as a real. Um, so it takes out integer three and considers it as a real number three. Right. So this is something we can do to interact between these two types. Uh, we also have constant couple of ones of these. Um, so an abstract version of this might look like this. We have a lens from a a prime to c plus a c plus a prime, uh, and then our Match is a map from C plus A to C plus A prime plus A, which is just going to pipe those things across, sort of do what we did before. Um, and then our build is going to take an A prime and, well, just gets injection onto the second factor. So it's going to build the, the A prime. Um, okay. There are some examples. Let me give one more type of optic. Um, it's a very trivial one, although there are many more that I could give. Um, just look here, definition, um, and adapter. Again, it's as is domain and codomain. to A, F, and a map from A prime to B and G. Um, so in the programming language, I think in Haskell, the Haskell lens library, these things are called ISOs. I hope that's correct. Um, and they have the flavor of sort of being inverses, except they're not required to be inverses. They're just mapped in opposite directions, and also we change the type. So I'm calling them adapters, uh, which is a, another common name in literature. Okay. So there we have some things. Um, and I guess what I want to talk about is uh, first to think about how to compose these for a second. Um, so I'm just going to talk about composing lenses. So I should say that uh, this talk basically comes, the setup comes from here, and then the punchline comes from here. Um, so Mitch, Mitch Wright was here a couple of weeks ago, one well, month ago now. Um, Is the opposite convention also coming from one of those papers? Or? No. Okay, that's just that just, okay. Um, I don't think so. It just made sense to me when I was writing these notes. Okay, so we've seen these sort of lens structures over and over in the seminar, like um, in this sort of back office function machine learning stuff. Uh, these, the learners are examples of lenses. Uh, Charles Hedges was here in January. He talked about open games. There are also examples of this sort of structure. Um, and so we've seen sort of arguments about how to compose them before, but I want to just uh, write that out. Um, so we have two lenses. Um, these have these things. These, I guess I put a G on top. Um, these things, P and G, and prime and p prime. And so we want to build some sort of composite lens from a a prime to c c prime. Um, so we, I, we want a map maps um, c 
e to a, and we also want to map from c times a prime to c prime. Um, so how do we build these things? Well, to build the map from c to a prime, we have a map from c to b called g prime, and we have a map from b to a called g. Um, so we get that map. And then to do this one, so we need a map from c times a prime to c prime, we can also just sort of follow our nodes with the types. So to produce a c prime, what we have to produce a c prime is um, uh, this p prime, um, this sort of put for the second lens. So, and what that takes in is a c and uh, a b prime. Yes. Now, we're sort of good for the c, so maybe I'll connect it up. But now we need a b prime. What can we do to produce one of them? We have this thing p, um, which produces a, a b prime from an a prime and, uh, uh, and just a normal b. Um, and so now we can feed the a prime into that. And now we still need a b, though. How do we get a b? Well, we've got this uh, get prime function here. So g prime takes a c and produces a b. And so this produces a new function of this type. And we're going to call it the composite. And in fact, this sort of forms a category, if we like. Um, so something here to note was types. Types are great. Types, just by following our nose, let us figure out how to compose these things. But it's kind of magic. Um, and it doesn't really help too much with uh, further composition. So if I want to compose like lenses and prisms, uh, it's not immediately clear how to do that or what kind of structure we get. And it's also, in, in this sort of picture, not clear to me what's really going on apart from the fact that we can just follow our nose and let the types do the work. Um, so the question here is just really uh, what is going on. Uh, especially as we see the structure appear over and over in or all these examples I've listed. So, so in, in machine learning and game theory, but also in sort of database theory, in the sort of data accesses, bidirectional programming world, um, in sort of stuff showing up from dynamical systems and, and David's work in, in linear, linear logic. Um, and I think the rest of this talk, I'm going to try and present what, should, what is a satisfactory partial answer, which is that what's going on is that we should think of optics as sort of wrappers. Um, optics are wrappers, what I said. But, but sort of described in two parts, which is two parts. OK. So what do I mean by that? Um, let me sort of draw pictures of how, how we should think about this. So instead of now, instead of thinking of these things as um, as just these these two maps, we can think of them as taking. So if I have a way to produce a primes from a, I get a way to produce b primes from b. Right? And how do I do that? Well. I have this function here, so I can uh, get an A from a, from a B. And I also have this function here that sort of puts out a B prime if I give it an A prime and a, and a B. And so I can sort of transform, if I have a way to transform A's into A primes, then by wrapping it in the structure, um, I can use both that transform, but something going on sort of parallel to that um, to transform b's into a, and use that to transform b's into b primes. Um, so, uh, for example, in this constant complement lens thing, if I was going to draw this, uh, the string diagram for this, I have sort of c and a. So. I have a way to, to turn a's into a primes, and I'm going to use that. I'm going to use sort of this lens to construct a way to turn c times a's into c times a primes. And wh what does this saying do? This says, well, I grab this thing and I sort of 
project out the second value of phi to this a, and also I have um, this sort of a prime coming out, this possible a from here, this c here, and I'm just going to feed that straight across. And so I'm, if I have a function, say, or something, a function from a to a prime, then now using this structure, I can produce a function from c times a to c times a prime. Really quite simple. Um, and in fact, if I was to do, say, the composite constant complement lenses in this sort of form, it would look really messy. But it becomes clear what we're doing here um, if I just sort of wrap this in another structure that sort of turns sort of uh, c times a thing, method, method, methods for turning c times a into c times a prime into something that is like uh, d times c times a to, to d times c times a prime, and just sort of add an extra parallel wire. Um, and so this is quite useful in a programming context because uh, we, may we may have a method for editing sort of part of a database, and what we want to do is sort of from that method produce a method for uh, editing or altering a larger, a larger data store, right? And so this is telling us how to sort of build these local operations into things that can act more, more globally in a consistent way. So they could do it through some constant complement way, or sort of generically through some sort of lensy way. Um, so we can draw similar diagrams in terms of prisms, although um, here are these diagrams are sort of, um, I mean, in this, these cases, we're working in something times, set times or something. So parallel here means um, times or sort of and. And here instead we can do sort of similar things. Um, yeah, I mean, for example, this custom cup from the lens will be drawn exactly the same way. Um, a sort of a way of turning A into A primes, and now we can have a way of turning C's or A's into C's or A primes, where if it's C, we just send it straight across, and if it's an A, we use this method. Right? A, a slight digression, uh, but um, actually no, I won't digress at all. Um, so, so that's sort of the, the intro. I'll, I'll mention, I guess, here what's going on here. Well, I have a method for turning A's into A primes, and I can turn it into a method from turning B's into B primes by just conjugating the F and then the G. Um, so there's, that's sort of the generic picture for adapters, and I guess I didn't draw the generic picture for lenses, so let me do, uh, prisms, so let me do that, it's exactly dual to the generic picture for prisms. So I can turn A's into A primes, um, and I want to wait to turn B's into B primes, and Nash lets me do this, and then sort of the, the co-product structure means I have this co-diagonal here, and I can do that. And so again, these two things allow me to have a way to turn the sort of ways to turn these into these, into these, into these. 